or we may be somebody who more relies upon a sense of uh, establishing my, my individuality and uh, kind of protecting that sense of individuality. And you might notice for yourself, if you experience yourself more, more, comfortab more comfortably on one towards one polarity or the other. And yet, wherever in psychological language it's called the optimum <coughs> distance that we kind of end up with, wherever we experience ourselves on that polarity, the dynamic is alive. To, to emphasize one's individuality is to experience isolation and loss of contact. And to emphasize the contact and the inclusion and the, the kind of embrace of life, which you might seek out through contact with others in different ways, is to experience the loss of the sense of individuality, uniqueness. So, we might say, well, what, what, what to do with that? How to meet that? We might recognize the, the truthfulness of that uh, setup, that pattern, that dynamic playing out. But how to um, explore what the Buddha, in, and I think among the Buddha's many, you know, kind of... Uh, good qualities, I might say, but uh, many brilliant insights. One of the most central is the willingness, more than any other figure that I know of in kind of religious history, to not get caught in extremes. So one of the, in terms of this dynamic, he talked about eternalism <coughs> and nihilism, not being attached to the one or the other. And talked about finding that relationship among the kind of opposite dynamics of things, which is not, which is free of one or the other, or both or neither. Very beautiful. What would it be to meet life and this essential dynamic of life without being caught on either one end, uh, unity, dissolution, uh, all is one, or the other end, individual, unique, just me, or both, or neither. So, we might say, secular life, at least in our culture, emphasizes the one, the individual. Spiritual life, certainly in its flakier forms, <coughs> tends to emphasize the other. All cozy, all is one, everything kind of primordial love soup. <laughs> the synthesis the synthesists tend to emphasize the both. And uh, uh, who emphasize I guess the the confused emphasize the neither. <laughs> most important, I would say, firstly, is just the recognition that this is an essential dynamic. And, anything, and the, the, the recognition of its essentialness, essential dynamic, means built in. Right? The fact that we can see it just as the whole span of, of human life, as this um, movement from uh, the whole to the individual and back to the whole. The fact that we can see that in that early stage of life, as we establish a sense of individuality. And the fact that we can recognize that those pulls towards those different poles in countless ways, in countless moments of our life, we can find ourselves trying to rely on the, the individuality as a, some sort of protection mechanism against the fear sometimes of contact, of inclusion, of dissolution. Or that we can find ourselves emphasizing the contact, longing for the contact, out of fear of aloneness. And suggests to us that this dynamic's really worthy of exploring. And I think that's why it's important, firstly, 
we recognize it as an essential dynamic. There's not, nothing wrong with it. There's nowhere we should be on that scale. But to actually start to recognize myself in there, and moving on that scale. And also to recognize not, that we're not trying to land in one or the other, or both, or neither. That's a, there's a real freedom in the way the Buddha holds that, I think not setting up some way it ought to look like, but this very open exploration of that dynamic. And a lot of, sometimes, in the questions that you, know, you raised through the morning, and my, my attempt in, in responding to them, to emphasize this open inquiry into what's happening. Right? Without agendas for what it ought to look like without, as I said to somebody this morning, without trying to fit ourselves into the teaching. So what is it, what might it be to explore this in an, in an open way, this dynamic? To explore the sense of individuality. No, just just in, a, in a kind of contemplative sense, if we come to ourselves, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of miracle to be alive and conscious. Look, it moves, it, it feels, it sees, it thinks, it, it conceives, it responds. Well, what's, what's doing, what's animating all of this? What's animating all of this? What a question to ask. As long as we don't sell ourselves short by just trying to find an answer but to actually contemplate one of my teachers spent quite some years in a monastery in Thailand and one of the practices his teacher gave him for three hours every afternoon was this okay this was the practice to raise and lower his right arm just this part and to contemplate that contemplate that. I'm not going to ask you to do it now. <laughs> but what, what's this? What's this? What's extraordinary is what seems, we might say, well, what a self-involved pursuit. Well, I thought there's something in Buddhism about not self and not just obsessing around self and not being selfish. And now it's all just like, oh, yes, I think, I feel, I move, I am. Well, if we actually contemplate this, we start to find, and I invite you, and of course contemplation isn't really the work of a moment, it's the work of a lifetime. Like anything really worth contemplating, our understanding can deepen, it seems to me, bottomlessly, endlessly, limitlessly in real contemplation. There's no degree to which um, we get really to the end of exploration. Because consciousness itself, life itself, is limitless. And therefore our exploration of it is, can be, limitless. But if we really contemplate the mysteriousness, the beginninglessness, and the endlessness, right? no sense of the beginning, other than the story, have no sense of the end other than the, the idea and the fear of what might happen. We experience ourselves beginninglessly and endlessly in time. And actually, if we look carefully, we experience ourselves beginninglessly and endlessly in space. Everyday common sense says, no, no, I end about here. But if we don't look to a common sense, if we look for a rather uncommon sense, a truer sense, uh, our experience interpenetrates life. Just the experience of seeing, sometimes very hard to get a grab on this, but the experience of seeing, we say, common sense says, oh, I'm over here, and life's out there, and I'm seeing you, and, it, and I put all the you out there. And yet when I actually contemplate, where is this seeing happening? Where is this seeing happening? 
we can't find in the 